Okay. Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to have to do a zoom, zoom, double zoom. One is this zoom, and one is that we're going to have to zoom because I have to give a little bit of a shorter share. So, Bezrat Hashem, we're going to do the blot, the daf, in uh, hopefully Bezrat Hashem record time. So let's hold on tight, fasten your seatbelts. Chaf Aleph, Amud Bet, 21b, the last line. Uh, no. Yeah? Yeah. Last line. Amr Avkana. Taraj Rav Natan by Minyumi Mishmei de Rabbi Tanchum. I don't see anybody else on, but that's fine. Don't get it. No, I just sent it on. Okay. Taraj Rav Natan by Minyumi Mishmei de Rabbi Tanchum. Rav Natan Bar Minyumi expounded in the name of Rabbi Tanchum. Ner shel Chanukah. Shenich lemala michaf amma. Psula. Kesuka u kemavli. A ner of Chanukah that you placed higher than 20 amot is pasul just like a sukkah that can't be higher than 20 amot. Because you can't tell that you're in a sukkah. And the whole point is to remember that we sat in sukkot. Which means the peripheral vision of a person doesn't really catch anything higher than 20 amot, which is about 40 feet. And the same halacha is by uke mavui. Mavui is when you have a rishut hayachid surrounded by three sides, but it goes into this little alleyway, into the rishut harabim. The chachamim said you can't carry there since it's owned by the ma- by everybody has rishut. You're going to mix that up and the rishut harabim. So when they hit each other perpendicularly, you have to have either a lechi standing, we're not talking about that now, or a kora, a beam, which we're speaking about, and it cannot be higher than 20 amot. Um, one of the reasons is because one of the reasons of the kora is as a hacker. So that people see it and they remind themselves, oh, this is the last point that I can carry. But further after this point is already Rishut Rabim. Therefore the Allah is once it's higher than 20 amot, it's too high for people to notice, and therefore you can't use it. Same thing here, but Nech Shel Chanukah, it's the same halacha. What? That um, the whole purpose of Nech Chanukah is Pesumin Yisra, she says. But no one's going to be able to see it, because people don't catch sites that are higher than 20 amot, and therefore it will be Psula. Ve'amir Av Kahana, Darash Rav Natan Bar Minyumi Mishved Rabbi Tanchum, another teaching from Natan Bar Minyumi in the name of Rabbi Tanchum. May Lichtiv Ve'aborek Embo Mayim The bar of Yosef, a tzaddik, was empty, it had no water. Mimashu Shalem Ve'aborek From the fact that it says the bar, the pit was empty. Eni Yodeh She Embo Mayim don't I know that there is no water? So, it teaches you there was no water, but there were scorpions, and there were, there were snakes and scorpions. Okay? So, Reuven didn't know about that, and nobody else knew about that, because if they would know about that, and they would have seen that he was saved, nothing happened to him, they would have realized that he's a great uh, tzaddik, and that's what saved him, and they shouldn't uh, sell him. Okay, let's continue. Um, um, uh, there's a lot on that to expand on this famous Gemara, but weiter. Amar Rabbi Ner Chanukah mitzvah nicha betefach hasmucha lepetach. The Ner Chanukah is a mitzvah to place it in the hand, the first hand breath, about this bit, that's this size, near the entrance um, of your chatzer or your shutrabim, right near your entrance. Rabbi, the, 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 the sound on Zoom sounds very not good, choppy. So I don't know if it's because there's too, I'm not sure. Because of this? I'm not, I'm not coming. I, I,
Is it better now? No? Hello, everybody. Good morning, everyone. We're about to learn. We're here on the Chavbet. No? I think it's the internet connection. The It might be. It's the same thing I'm using from yesterday. Should we go outside? That's going to be worse. Worse? Yeah. We might, uh, might have to get another uh, microphone. Or if we figure out how to do this, I'll just take the microphone from there and put it on him for this. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. So it's really choppy, huh? Yeah. You, it doesn't sound good. Like you talk, but you hear it. It's just like <laughs> when you say it, it doesn't sound clear. Uh huh. It's interesting because you sound very clear. You sound fine. Um, so what should we do? You're on Facebook also, right? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So what should we I'm do? Watching, I'm watching it on Facebook right now. It is what it is. My computer is broken. Oh, wait. Hi, Shmuley. Say good morning. Good morning, Shavuot Oh. Good morning, Shavuot Swat team over here. We're doing social distancing. Don't worry about it. Okay, but... Uh, Michael, on Facebook, is it clear on Facebook? Yes, it does. Well, tell us if it's clear on Facebook. Okay. Uh, I don't know. It's being recorded now. If you want, just just for the sake of doing it, I would just just leave it on. You can keep it on, but when you go back and hear the replay, you'll hear what it's on. Like, just don't worry. Focus on Facebook. It's all good. I'll watch it on Facebook. Okay, that will be clear, you think? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, fine. Okay. So now, so the Gemara is like this. So it's a mitzvah to place the, within, within the tefach that's near the petach, near the entrance of his home. Because, what's the simple reason? So Rashi says, because you need a hacker. You need to be noticeable that it belongs to this home. Okay. Who says that the Balabayit placed it here? Who says that they, if you know that the owner of the home placed a nair over here, so you start wondering, what's this? Ah, he's saying something. He's being mefast on the nays. He's, he's publicizing, publicizing the miracle. But if you don't even know that it comes from him, just like a random thing, maybe someone left it there in the street, whatever it is. So, so therefore it has to be within the tefach. That's the mitzvah. Okay. Says the Gemara, on what side of the entrance do you place it? On the right side. <coughs> which, okay, which would mean the same side as the mezuzah. Okay, like when you, Rav Shmuel Medifti Amar Mismo, but Rav Shmuel Medifti says from the left. Means on the opposite side of the mezuzah. The Hilchet Mismo, and the Halacha is, from the left side. So that the Ner Chanukah should be on the left and the Mezuzah should be on the right, should be surrounded by mitzvot. <coughs> now what was the reason for the one that said you do it on the other side? Because everything you should do be a min. Right? You should do everything on the right side. But he's saying that no. Now how do you know that the now, which side is the mezuzah? The mezuzah is on the right. Why is the mezuzah on the right? Rashi says, because it says, um, betecha, and the Gemara dash and biatecha, the way that you come in. Now, which way do you come into your home? With which foot? With the right. The person uses his right foot first. So if you're about to walk into your home, you're going to use your right foot. That derch biatcha, the way that you walk in, that's where your mezuzah should be. So you use your right foot, so it should be next to your right foot. So now that we know the mezuzah is on the right foot, put the ner chanukah on the left side, so you'll be surrounded by mitzvot. Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Rav Asi, Asur le'atzot ma'ot keneged ner chanukah. It is prohibited to, this is Rav Asi's halacha, to count money next to the ner chanukah. Now, we already learned the Gemara before 
that Rav said that you're not allowed to use the light. Asur li shtamesh deorah. So what's Rav Asi saying here? So it's a machloket rishonim if Rav Asi is arguing or not. We're going to go with the Rosh's pshat. Some learn that they're arguing. And, but the Rosh learns, and others also, that he's not arguing with Rav. And <clears throat> he's saying like this, that he's coming to add to Rav. Rav said that you're not allowed to have pleasure from the light of the Ner Chanukah. Rav Asi says you're not allowed to count money. What's the difference? He's adding, and he's saying like this. Because um, Rav is only speaking about something that's not disgraceful, but takes a while, it takes a time to do it. Because people are going to think, oh, you're using it for your light? So obviously it's not for, it's not nikar, it's not recognizable that it's for the sake of a mitzvah. Okay? But if you do something very quickly, quick job, um, then it's fine. Ravasti is adding and he's saying, no, even if you do something very quick, which won't really take away the, uh, the look of Ne'er Chanukah to be an, for Pirsu Manes, it's just a temporary quick, you know, I just want to count five, 12 bills. But if it's a Tashmish of Ginai, if it's a disgraceful thing, meaning because you have to get really close to the light to count the bills to see what they are. Or, in those days it wasn't bills, it was coins. So you have to get really close to the light. So that's already more disgraceful. So now you're being mevazah the mitzvah. So that is asur. He doesn't say leora. He says keneged ner chanukah. Because keneged ner chanukah is right next to it. So since it's a, dis- it's a disgraceful act, you have to have honor to the... Um, to the, to the, you have to give honor to the mitzvah. There is, by the way, a ram that also says another reason that you're not allowed to have pleasure is because it's like the menorah in the Beit HaMikdash that we're lighting. In the Beit HaMikdash menorah, you aren't allowed to have pleasure because it's mi'ilad, is, in, is a prohibition to have any pleasure from things in the Beit HaMikdash. Okay, so let's continue. So the Gemara says, see, anyways, so the Gemara says, Kiamrita Kamei Shmuel, Rabbi Yehuda said, when I said this before Shmuel, Amar Li V'chinei Kedusha Yeshba. What's this halach over here? You're not allowed to have any pleasure from it? It doesn't make sense. Does it have Kedusha? It's, you know, it's a, is, it a, is it a sacrifice? Is it something holy? It's not. It's not a sacrificial item. It's a mitzvah. So you're not allowed to have any pleasure from the mitzvah? Uh, you're not allowed to use it for anything else? Matkat Rav Yosef. So Rav Yosef said, "V'chidam kedushi yeshbo." So Rav Yosef didn't like what Shmuel said. Shmuel said, "If it doesn't have any holiness, then I don't see why you can't count money next to it." So Rav Yosef said, "Really? Does blood of a regular chayav of it? If you slaughter a deer or a chicken, the Torah says is a mitzvah that you have to cover the blood. You have to like bury some of the blood." called Kisui Hadam, covering the blood. So does the blood have any holiness? No. And still yet we find the Tanya v'shafach v'chisahu b'mesha shafach yichaseh. The Torah says, the blood, you spill the blood by the slaughtering and you shall cover it with earth. So the Gemara says that since it says them together, whatever you, with whatever you slaughter, you spill the blood, which is with your right hand, you shall cover it, meaning you should cover it with your right with your hand, and that comes to teach us that you should not cover it with your foot. So Rav Yosef says the source is like this: There's, that pasuk teaches us that you should be careful with mitzvot, even if they're not holy, they don't have any, you know. Um, Holiness that you're not allowed to have pleasure from, like something for the sacrifice, the sacrifices or something that belongs to the Beit HaMikdash, yet every mitzvah has to be honored and cannot be shamed. And that's what the Torah says, don't just kick some dirt on there with your foot. So the same halacha over here, don't use the menorah to count your money so that the mitzvot become shameful for you. Okay? Now, what does Shmuel hold? He says... That um, 
Shmuel agrees with that halacha. It's a halacha ein mitzvot b'zuyot olav by the dam. It's a brayta. So Shmuel says no. That's the mitzvah itself. The mitzvah itself is to take the the earth and put it on the blood. So now, how are you doing the mitzvah? You kick it. A, you just use your foot as if you're not interested. It's not a nice way. Here, you're not using the mitzvah itself. What are you doing? You're using the light of the mitzvah. Okay? But if you want to use the, the actual item of the mitzvah, the earth itself, uh, or the, the, right, that would be a problem. Like we're going to see soon that if you use the actual light of the menorah, we're going to see soon, you now let it light from one end to another. We're going to see right that Shmuel will, will be modem. It's such a halach. Okay. I, I mentioned at the beginning of the class, I don't know if anybody heard me, that uh, I'm very sorry. I tell you, I'm in a pretty great rush. So uh, we're going to move very quickly today. But I'll try to be as clear as possible. We're now on 22A. 22 A. 22 Amud Aleph, Chavbed Amud Aleph, right in the middle of the page. First word is, uh, what'd you say? Alav, exactly. Pa'am and Eber, Bishur ben Levi. Bishur ben Levi, they asked her Bishur ben Levi, Ma'o listapek minoy is to kakol shiva. Are you allowed to enjoy the ad- adornments that they hang up in the sukkah all seven days? Okay? Could you eat from the fruits that you hung up in the sukkah? They already said that you're not allowed to count money opposite the Ner Chanukah, which means make sure that you don't make mitzvot you don't, che- you don't cheapen the mitzvot in front of you. See, here too, you can't do that. So now, where is you learning the halacha of sukkah from? From Chanukah. So the Gemara says, Ribbono Shalom, it's not Chanukah, it's Purim. It's Vena Hapachu. Amar Av Yosef, Mori de Avram, master of Avram Avinu. Tolei Tanya, but the Lord Tanya. Like Ribbono Shalom. Rabbi Shuvan Levi is the, making this contingent something that has a brighter, which is good, we're going to see in a second, Sukkah has a brighter. It's making something that has a brighter contingent on the halacha of, of Ravasti, which does it just as the halacha of Ravasti, of an Amora. It should be just the opposite. Why? Sukkah Tanya. Sukkah we have a brighter for. Chanukah lo Tanya. Chanukah we don't have a brighter for. The Tanya, because we don't turn a brighter, Sicha Chalkehil Chita, is someone who is Misachech, he put enough strach to make it kasher. Vitra Bikramim, Uvstidinin, Am Tuyadin, Vitala Baigozim, Afasakin, Shkedi Virimonim, Uvachile Anavim, Vatarot Shashibalim. Okay, basically, he crowned it with beautiful sheets that were designed and had different types of tapestries and sort of things that were woven. David, good morning. And he hung walnuts, a fasakin, I think are, I think are apricots, shkedim, are almonds, pomegranates, um, clusters of grapes, crowns of shibalim, of, uh, of stalks of wheat, or little bottles of wine, and oil, and bags, little bags of flour. All these you're not allowed to have pleasure from until Motzei Yom Tov HaAcharon Shel Chag. Why? Because once they were Muktzeh for the mitzvah, they become Muktzeh. V'imitna leyem hakol l'fi tena'o. But if you made a tenai, before you hung up, you said, I don't want them to have the kedusha of Sukkah, then whatever you made up happens. Now, the problem is like this over here. Um, that here it seems to be a different reason. Not because mitzvot shouldn't be bazui to you. It shouldn't be cheap in the mitzvot. The reason is because they have kedusha and they're muktzeh. And that's what the Gemara says in Sukkah. So Tosfot asks this question. And Tosfot goes on to say that there are two different halachot. 
There's two halachot here in the Brayta. One Easter is Muktze, and one that's only on Shabbat and Yom Tov itself. But Chol Hamoed, without the second reason, there wouldn't, there wouldn't be a problem. But now there's a second reason why they asur all seven days until Motzei Yom Tov Echron. Shabbat and Yom Tov Muktze. But Chol Hamoed, why is it Muktze? The answer is for this reason of Bizui Mitzvah. Bizui Mitzvah means you're shaming the Mitzvah. Okay, now what's the difference between the two reasons? Um, the difference is like this. If they're still hanging and they're still part of the mitzvah, on Chalamoid, you can't have any, you can't partake. But if they fall off, then you could, it's not a busy of the mitzvah. But on Shabbat and Yom Tov, where there's another reason of mukta, they have kedushas, so even if they fall off, they're still mukta until the end of Shabbat. That's just a, a side little point. The, the main point of the question of the Gemara is, Abotai, that um, David, if you can't hear me clearly, and you're on Zoom, then Michael said, go to Facebook. Because he said that, that the connection is choppy here on the Zoom in the TV Ezra. Okay. That's... I, I hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Oh, really? Oh, I hope Michael knows that. Tell Michael. Okay. So, so that, okay, so the Gemara says, so you see over here that the Brita that's written is actually for Sukkah. And we're saying, oh, the reason for Sukkah is Chanukah. We should say, Chanukah is... So the man says, Elam Rav Yosef, Avu and the Kulu Dam. The father bright of all of these is the bright of Dam. Because there we have a Pasuk, Rashi and Tosfot say, the Shafach Vechisa. And really we learn Ne'er Chanukah from there and the bright of Sukkah is also learned from Dam. Okay, Itmar. Nu Gemara. Everybody, if you didn't understand what was going on until now, Nu Gemara. Very famous machloket. Rav Amar Eimad Liki Miner Liner. Ushmuel Amar Madlikin. Rav says, you may not light from candle to candle. Okay, Chanukah Nerot. Can't light from one candle to the other. Ushmuel Amar Madlikin. Go right ahead and do it. Rav Amar. Rav said, Okay, now, we're going to see soon, don't forget, that there's a halacha of, you can't have mitzvot b'zuyot alav. And that we learn out from a pasuk, from dam. So what's Shmuel going to do with that? We're going to see soon. Next machlokat. Rav Amar ein matirin tzitzit mi beged lebeged. You now want to take off tzitzit from one garment and place them on another garment. Ushmul Amar matirin mi beged lebeged. Shmuel says it's not a problem. It's not shaming it. Okay. So Rav says you're shaming the tzitzit, even though you're using for them for another mitzvah. But even if you take it from off an old garment, you want to put on a brand new garment. It's still um, shaming the first garment that had a mitzvah on it. Shmuel says, no problem. Rav Amar, another machloket. Now we know that there are many, many machloket between Rav and Shmuel. But these three have something about them. We'll see in one second. You'll see. That they come together. Rav Amar, ein alach k'rabi Shimon b'greda. Shmuel Amar, alach k'rabi Shimon b'greda. Do we follow Rabbi Shimon that argues with Rabbi Yehuda? These are Tanaim. In regards to pulling, in Yiddish you say schlepping, which means like, um, like, chalan, like, the uh, grol, to, to, to drag, the right word, to drag a bench across some earth on Shabbat. Rabbi Shimon says you may, Rabbi Yehuda says you can't, I'll explain in a second. Rav says, oh, Ta'alachaz, like Rabbi Shimon, you could. Shmuel says, no way, you can't. Okay, now what's the machloket? We had this, the machloket is, a dover she'eno mitchaven. Anything that you do, okay, on Shabbat, an action, that you're not trying to do the melacha, you're trying to do something else, you're trying to bring a bench across this garden so that you could have a bench to sit on over there. Some, someone asked you for a bench. So I'm not trying to make 
a little ditch, a little furrow in the ground. But at the end of the day, I look back, and it wasn't Pistikresha. It wasn't inevitable that it would happen. Okay? Could be what happened, could be... At the end of the day, I did make, I did do it. So is that an Isur or not? Rabbi Shimon says, no problem, because you were not Mechaven. You have to have an artisan act. You have to be Mechaven. You have to have intentions to do what you want to do. Over here, I'm not trying to do that. So even though it resulted in that, it's not a problem. Rabbi Yudha says, it is a problem. So Rabbi Shimon says it's not, and Rabbi says, Allah follows Rabbi Shimon, it's fine. Shmuel says, no, it's not fine. Now, what are these three bunched together for? Amar Abaye, Kolmil Dimar Avid Kirav. Labar Mehanitlata Avid Kishmu. My rabbi, Rabba, his name is Rabba Bar Nachmeni, he did everything according to Rav, against Shmuel. Besides these three, that's why they're put together. These three, he went like Shmuel. He allowed you to go miner liner from, from beggar to beggar for tzitzit. And he did not allow, Shmuel was strict in regards to the last one, for pulling the bench across, dragging the bench. I made a mistake. Shmuel is the one that says it's okay like Rabbi Shimon. So he was mekel, he was lenient in regards to all these three, like Shmuel. It was Shmuel that went like Rabbi Shimon. I keep saying Rav. Please, I hope everybody is still on. Rav goes like Rabbi Huda. Okay. So the Gemara says, the Tanya, like we learned in the Brighter, Rabbi Shimon, Omer Gorel Adam Ita, Kisei Vistav a person can drag a bed, a chair, or a bench on the ground. He doesn't have to worry that it might make a little groove in the ground, which would, which by the way, if you do that intentionally, the malacha is choresh, or building, because that's the way you build a home, okay, you dig in, or choresh, which is plowing, because you're making the ground soft and fertile and able to be planted, you plant a seed inside it. You can do it as long as you don't have that intention. It's okay. Okay, so let's continue now. So, so there was someone sitting from the Rabbanan before Rav Adam Rahava, and he said, you should know the reason for Rav, that he doesn't allow um, from one nair to the other nair, is because it's shaming the mitzvah. Okay? It's a bizayon to the mitzvah. Why? Because what are you doing? Um, you're taking a, a third candle, like this, you have your menorah, take another random candle, you place it on, and then you go to your next mitzvah. So now you're lighting something that's not a mitzvah at all, even though it's for the purpose of another mitzvah, but this is not a mitzvah, and that's a bizayon for the mitzvah. Now what does Shmuel hold? Shmuel holds what you're probably thinking, that that's not a call to bizayon for the mitzvah either. He also doesn't like bizayon for the mitzvah. But... He says, um, like we saw before, that even Shmuel agrees when you use the actual mitzvah, like the dirt. It's a pasuk, it's a brighter. He doesn't argue with the brighter. So Shmuel would also agree, but here he holds it's not really a bizayon to the mitzvah, because the purpose of taking the candle, even though I'm lighting something that's not the mitzvah, just a, like in, you know, a, middle, a middle man here, but that's for the purpose of a mitzvah, so that's not a bizayon for the mitzvah. Rav says, since at that moment, that candle that you lit was just, you know, lighting a candle, even though your purpose is to go, your intention is to go and follow up with a new mitzvah, that's a bizayon. Amaluhu, so Rav Adabar Ahava said to the old chachamim that heard the, the words of this chacham, they don't listen to him. Meaning, Time the Rav Mishum the Kachamachish Mitzvah. The reason for Rav is only because you're being Makhish Mitzvah, which means it looks like you're denying, like you're mi- mitigating, you're minimizing the Mitzvah itself. What, what do you have over here? You have a Menorah. And it looks like you're taking a little bit of the oil away, because you're drawing away some of the fire. So, um, so therefore, that's the problem. That is the problem. But Shmuel would, so therefore, Shmuel would, uh, uh, um, Shmuel, 
Shmuel would admit, would agree with Rav, that if you take a third candle, a middle candle, that's a problem. Everybody has a problem with bizui mitzvah. This chacham, he said, that's only Rav's opinion. But Rav Adar Rav said, no, everyone agrees to that, that if you take a middle thing. The question is if you go straight. I go straight from one menorah to the other menorah. So Shmuel says, that's not a bizayon to the mitzvah. So, 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 so Rav says, why not? Because you're going one from one mitzvah to the next mitzvah. Rav says, that's still a problem. Because it looks like you're mitigating from the first mitzvah when you take from the second mitzvah. Shmuel says, so much so, um, I don't see that. Fine. My benayu, what's the difference between the two explanations in the words of Rav? If whether it's because of bizayon of mitzvah, it can be benayu, the kamal, can be shragal, the shragal. Like I just told you. If you go straight from one fire to the next mitzvah, from one fire to the next fire, if you say it's because of bizayon for mitzvah, there's no problem. But the one that says it's because you're denying the first mitzvah, so it's also a problem, even one straight from one menorah to the other menorah, because it looks like you're taking away from the first ner. Okay. So sh- now, according to that reason, Shmuel would admit, again, if you have a middle, middle candle, that that would be a problem. Mati Ravavia. Ravavia has a, has a question. On the first explanation that we said, is what? Of Bizayon Mitzvah. Okay? Bizayon Mitzvah would, would mean that you're allowed to do Mishraga the Shraga, from one to the other, and you're only not allowed to do it with a middle candle. Because it's, 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 it's a bizayon if you use something that it's not going to be used for the mitzvah. The problem's like this. We know what Maser Sheni is. Maser Sheni is the second tithing of your fruits. The first tithing goes to the levi. The second one goes to yourself, but it has holiness. you got to eat it in Yerushalayim. Let's say it's too heavy to carry there. You redeem the holiness into a coin. And let's say into a cellar, which is a large coin. You carry the coin to Yerushalayim, and then... You, and you redeem the holiness in the coin back into food. You eat that food there. What about if you want to find out, you know, a seller is worth a certain amount of golden coins. This is a perfect, good, big seller. You want to know if the coins, the golden coins, that you, you want to weigh them against the seller to see if they're, they're real golden coins or they're missing some of their real weight. Because everything was by weight. So are you allowed to put the seller of Maestro Shani, which has holiness, it's a mitzvah item, and on the other side, you put the, same, the right amount of golden coins that equal up to a sella to see if it's equal. So it says in the bright, You're not allowed to weigh opposite it. Even if the purpose of the, of the, of the golden coins is because I want to use them to actually use them as redemption coins to put other Maise into them. Ah, so this is like the middle candle, Right? I want, it says you're not allowed to. So, so the Gemara is asking that what? If you say the machlok of Rav and Shmuel is like Rav Adabar Hava, I actually, I think I said it, they said the cash is on Rav Adabar Hava. It's going to be on the other way around. If you say that, like Rav Adabar Hava, everything will be fine. What did Rav Adabar Hava say, everybody? Let's remember that you, you're, um, that the machloket Rav and Shmuel is when you go straight from one to the other. Because, yeah, no, so I was right before, because Rav Adabar Hava argued with the Chacham. He said, the machloket is only because you're being machish the mitzvah. It looks like you're taking away from the first mitzvah. But if you use a middle, a middle thing, and you're not taking away, and you, uh, you're not taking, sorry, besides taking away this bizayon, which means the only way that Shmuel ever said it could be okay, is because he said, it doesn't look like you're mitigating from the first mitzvah. I don't see that. But he would admit that if you shame the mitzvah by using a middle candle, that would be a problem. Aval bikinsa, with another piece of wood of the Asar Shmuel, with a little wood chip, it's like another match, that would be a problem. V'halo have it. And this won't be a cash. Why? Because these other coins here, what are they compared to? Right now, they're not mitzvah. 
you want to, or you should, you could, you would, but you haven't yet used them for a mitzvah. So now there's some random golden coins. You want to see if they equal a stella. That's, that's a shaming of the mitzvah. That's why this bright that works with Rab and Shmuel. Shmuel agrees. But if you say that Shmuel goes like the first Manda Omar, and he says, like the Chacham that said, that the Machloket is actually when you use a random candle. And Shmuel says, that's not a bizayon to the mitzvah because I'm going to do it for another mitzvah. So even though right now it's not a mitzvah, but since I'm using it for another mitzvah, it's not a problem. That's the Machloket between Rav and Shmuel. This will be a tremendous problem. Why, Rabotai? Because here, what am I using the golden coins for? Right now, they're random, but soon they're, they're, the purpose is to use them for a mitzvah. And Shmuel says it's not a problem. So why does this Breita say it's a problem? It's a kasha on Shmuel, if you explain Shmuel the way that the Chacham did. Amar Abba, no, it's not a problem. The problem has nothing to do with Shemi and the Mitzvah. This Breita is a different problem. Um, the problem is like this. What happens if you weigh them and the Stella weighs more? So you're going to tell, you're going to say, eh, I'm not using these golden coins. Or, right? Or, or, um, or let's say they weigh more, so there's more. Whatever it is, the point is they're not, they're not proper coins. So I don't want to use them. Okay, just put them back in the drawer. The kamapik l'hul you're going to use them for chulin. So now what comes out retroactively is what? That you used a random item and you never ended up using it for mitzvah. The only reason why Shmuel would say you're allowed to do it, like by that random, that middle candle, that middle match, right? You take, you use a match, that's the best thing. It's because the match is going to be used to, to light a mitzvah. But here there's a danger. Because if the result is that they didn't equal the stella, you're not going to use them at all. So then retroactively, what did you use? You used a stella to tell you, it's a bizayon to the mitzvah. To tell you about just, uh, just, a, you know, just a random piece of information, if those golden coins are a seller or not. That's why you can't do it. It says in the Torah by the, by the menorah, Outside the parochet ha'edut, you should set up the menorah. Okay, which is in the heichau, right outside the curtain that divides between the holies and the holy of holies. You place on the south side the menorah. And the Pasuk says over there, um, why does Hashem want the light of the menorah there? All 40 years in the Midbar, they had Hashem's light um, with the Anan Hashem on the Mishkan during the day and the Eish at night. So why in the world does Hashem need light? Hashem needs light? The Klai Yisrael needs Hashem's light. Rather, it is, a, um, it is a testimony. That's why the Pasuk says, It's a testimony to the world that HaKadosh Baruch Hu rests His divine presence in Yisrael. Now, that's why it says, Parochet Haidut, the, the curtain of testimony. So the question is, my Haidut, how does that testify anything? So the Gemara says like this, Amar Rav, zu ner ma'aravi, shenoten ba Hashem en kimidat chavotea, en mimena haya madlik, ubaya misayim. Okay, quick, Rashi brings two pshatim over here. We know there were seven nerot on the menorah. Okay, seven. So the machlok at menachot, how you place the menorah. Do you place the menorah from the entrance of the holies to the holy holies, which is from east to west, from east to west, okay? And then, it was on the south side of the room, but it was fr- the, the, the seven were going from east to west. So then, the, when we call the Ner Ma'aravi, is not the most western one, it's the one Second to most Western. So if you have seven of them, and my, my thumb here, if you can see it next to my chin, is number one, is the most Eastern one. One, two, three, four, five, six. So number six is called the Ner Ma'aravi. Okay? So that one, 
is the Ner Maravi. And that one had a miracle. It always stayed lit. And all the other ones got lit from it. We'll see in a second how. Okay? Or, the other way is, that it was actually from south, from north, from south, it was in the south side of the room, and it went from south to north. So therefore, the Ner Maravi was the middle one. It was the middle one, and all the other ones, the, the north ones, let's say the north ones on my right hand, they all faced towards the Ner Maravi, and, the, and it faced towards south. And the south ones faced towards north, towards the middle one. And the middle one faced towards the Kodesh HaKadashim, that way, westward. Okay? So now, Rav says, what was the testimony? The Ner Maravi. The western Ner, whatever it was either the middle one, which was the fourth, or the sixth, if it was going that way. What happened was, So, when he would fix the Nerot, during the daytime, that one was still running. So he let it run till the end of the day. And at the end of the day, he would pull out the wick that was still lit, he would put in a new wick and new oil, even though it was a miracle, but that's the mitzvah, metiv And then, he would light the new wick from it. Ubayim isayem. And he would do this at night time. So, what do we see from here? So there was an amazing, amazing miracle of the edut of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that the light just kept lighting. That's a good question. So what's, what do we make such a big deal about the Ner Chanukah, the Nes Chanukah? If this happened until Shimon HaTzadik died. For years and years and years, hundreds of years in the Beit HaMikdash, this happened. Every day, just kept going. Never went out. And everything got lit from it. Good question. Rabbi Aaron Kotler has the piece on it. But right now, we're not talking about the Nes Chanukah. So the Gemara's point is, that's the Eidut. Now what does it have to do with our sugya? The point is, that says the Gemara, um, it's impossible since the Nerot were, were kavi, were established, they were set over there. Okay? They didn't move. And it was impossible to get them close enough to the middle, to the Nerma Aravi. So you had to use a match. So this is a problem for both explanations. It's a bizui mitzvah because you're using a middle match, or right, and it's a and it's and it looks like you're minim, mitigating from the first mitzvah because you're drawing light from one of the mitzvot. So Rav Papa said no. In the Beit Hamikdash, they had very long wicks. And therefore, the long wicks were able to be stretched till the Nehemiah Ravine and went straight. So the Gemara says, so, so, the mitzvah, kasha. That only takes care of Bizayon Mitzvah, because you're not using a middle one. But over here, you have a problem with, um, it's a kasha on Rav. Rav says, you still not allowed to go directly because Akhushay Mitzvah, because it looks like you're drawing away from the first mitzvah. So the Gemara says, Kasha. That is a good Kasha. The Gemara says, My have Allah. What is the Allah at the end of the day? Omar Avhuna Bered Rav Shua, Chazena, it depends. You want to know what the Allah is? The Allah is, I adlaka osa mitzvah madlikin miner liner. Vi anacha osa mitzvah ein madlikin miner liner. Um, if you say that the mitzvah of Ner Chanukah is the hadlaka, Adlaka is the mitzvah. So then Rav will have to admit that um, that's why Rav would admit that madlikin miner liner. That you're allowed to go from one ner to the other ner. Because we see in a Abraita, in the Nerot of the Beit HaMikdash, where that's definitely a mitzvah, that's a mitzvah of the and they went from one ner to the other ner. And what was the mitzvah there? The mitzvah wasn't, the people should see, the mitzvah was to light. So therefore, Rav will have to admit, and there's a brighter against him. However, 
the Iyah Hanacha Oseh Mitzvah, but if the real mitzvah of Ner Chanukah is that the mitzvah should, it should be placed. And the lighting of the menorah every Chanukah is not really about lighting. It's just lighting is a prerequisite so that it should be there. But really the mitzvah is that you should have a, menor- a lit light. Um, it's just a, right, a conditional thing to light it. Then Rav will say, Ein madlikin miner liner. Because it will be a bizayon for the mitzvah. And the hadlaka is not a real maisa. Which means, in the Beit HaMikdash, that was the real mitzvah, the hadlaka. So, you see, so therefore, you can do it. But here, where the lighting is not even the mitzvah itself, it's just the, the having the ner. So therefore, lighting will be a, bizay, a bizayon. He would have to admit that if you light straight, that's not a bizayon, because that's the mitzvah itself, the lighting. You would have to admit. Um, and, and, the, and, and therefore, but where could he still stand ground if, if he says, Hanacha also mitzvah? Then he could say it's different than the Beit HaMikdash. The Ibailu, because we had such a shayla. We had such a question. Hanacha also mitzvah or Hanacha also mitzvah? But I have to run. And Bezrat Hashem, today, I'd like to make another shiur later on today. I'll be in touch with Michael and Amnon, you get in touch with them and they'll send out a text so we can maybe catch up. Today will be maybe the great day. And we catch up. Have a great day. Cold tooth.